So this video isn't going to do very well because I don't actually think that many people care about Clotho. But if you clicked on this video, I'm going to ignore everything that I've learned about making videos to optimize audience retention and reward you by blowing your mind with some serious science across 10 studies that I analyzed for this video. We're going to go on a journey, you and me. Yes, it's going to be complex. No, it's not going to be easily digestible. And I don't give a damn. Let's PhD this and I'll try my best to walk you through the complexities. If you accidentally clicked on this video, Clotho is a protein secreted by your cells that has some fascinating science indicating it packs a serious punch in protecting your brain from developing dementia, especially Alzheimer's. In fact, this includes the devastating ApoE4 versions of Alzheimer's, which is especially intriguing. Check this out. In this study that I just referenced, researchers recruited people with a high likelihood of developing Alzheimer's because they have one gene of ApoE4, which is a heavily implicated gene in developing Alzheimer's. They then split these people into two groups. One group had normal Clotho expression, meaning they produce normal amounts of Clotho protein. The other group had a specific Clotho mutation, meaning they also have the Clotho gene that allows them to produce this protein, but they have a slight change in the gene structure, a mutation that increases the amount of Clotho that they produce. So then what did the researchers discover after doing brain scans on these Alzheimer's prone individuals? Well, they had several measurements, but I'll highlight one of the most telling here. We're looking at cerebrospinal fluid beta amyloid protein. To orient you, this is a key protein implicated in Alzheimer's disease. The researchers are looking at the cerebrospinal fluid, the liquid outside of your brain cells, to determine if the cells are able to release a beta amyloid protein effectively. The blue bars represent people without this genetic Alzheimer's risk because they do not have copies of ApoE4 gene that we mentioned earlier. The red bars are the people with this ApoE4 gene with the KLVSNC being people with a normal Clotho gene and the KLS het are the ones with this mutation in one of their Clotho genes leading to assumed greater Clotho expression. As we can see in the middle bars, those with the ApoE4 gene, yet no Clotho gene mutation, have reduced cerebrospinal fluid beta amyloid levels. This would suggest that these people are retaining more beta amyloid in their cells. Not a good thing. In addition, those with the Clotho mutation experience more beta amyloid in their cerebrospinal fluid, indicating that they are releasing it from the cells. To be clear, some of this is a speculation, but other data from this study does indicate more beta amyloid protein inside the brain when the Clotho mutation is not present. This is also corroborated in this study. Okay, so we know something is happening, but what about long-term data? Do people with this mutation and assumed higher Clotho levels actually have a brain-protected effect? Well, let's return to this study that I briefly popped up. And again, we're looking at two groups of people with the same ApoE4 gene. One group without this assumed protective Clotho mutation and one group with the Clotho mutation. This time, however, we're not looking at beta amyloid protein, although they did that too. But we're looking at the incidence of Alzheimer's disease and mild cognitive impairment across decades. We see that data here with the dark line being those without the Clotho mutation and the yellow line being the people with the mutation. Then the vertical axis is the incidence of Alzheimer's or MCI, mild cognitive impairment. So the higher the lines go, the worse. Clearly there is a separation between the two groups. There is a substantial reduction in cognitive impairment risk in people with this Clotho mutation. To be fair, these are not adjusted analyses. So it's possible there is some confounding variable that is the true explanation, but considering what we've already seen about Clotho, there's at least a good chance that this is due to Clotho, although not infallible. Okay, 
With this uncertainty, could we find more direct ways to see if Clotho is directing these effects? Also, what if I told you it uh, wasn't exactly Clotho directly causing these effects? And can we just administer Clotho? Well, let's go another layer deeper. For that, we can lean on this study, wherein researchers injected Clotho into monkeys and measured their cognitive performance. We see the cognitive test here. We have a baseline, so before injection, then the control condition known as a vehicle, so that's the non-Clotho injection, and then the Clotho injection. The vertical axis is the performance on the cognitive task. The higher, the better. Clearly, the Clotho condition improved relative to the other two. To be clear, these are not Alzheimer's afflicted monkeys, and still there is a benefit to the brain. But other studies like this one investigate the effect in other animal models and confirm the Alzheimer's effects, including Alzheimer's specific mechanisms, which I can cover in the future. For now, we understand that Clotho has likely a direct cognitive benefit, but I did tease that this might be a bit misunderstood. Here's why. Usually when we inject a protein, that protein binds or interacts in some way with the cells that uh, changes their behavior. However, we know that Clotho does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So it never actually interacts with the brain, at least not from the rest of the body. So if it's separated from the brain, how is it enacting these effects? Remember, the monkeys are not injected in the brain, but just like any other injection, so why did they experience benefit? Well, through super cool mechanisms. So since this video is already going to tank, let's go another layer deeper and maybe we can drum up some complaints about how this is too complicated in the comments. If we pop open this uh, influential study, in this study, the researchers again injected Clotho into animals and showed again an improvement in cognitive ability. Think limitless, but for mice. These mice started beating the researchers in chess and seduced their wives with their superior intellect. Anyway, they also analyzed what other molecules are highly expressed after injection of Clotho, and they discovered that multiple molecules related to platelets were highly expressed. Platelets are the cell fragments that circulate in your blood, and when activated, begin the clotting cascade, meaning that they clump together to create clots. That, without context, sounds scary, but activating platelets can mean many things. And in this case, Clotho seems to directly activate platelets in the blood, indicated here. Here we're seeing researchers measure blood platelet factor four, so PF4, a marker of platelet activation with vehicle or control injection and with Clotho injection. The Clotho injection leads to a rise in platelet factor four, indicating a likely activation of the platelets in the body. However, when the researchers use a platelet activation inhibitor on the right there, there is no increase in platelet factor four. In addition, when taking absolutely gorgeous brain slices on the right side, we see the researchers are using different color markers to identify different sections of the brain. The red one is the one indicating the platelet factor four, or clotho or vehicle. So in both clotho and vehicle, we see only a background of red. However, we see large amounts of platelet factor four, PF4. This confirms that clotho likely doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier and PF4 does, which is how clotho at least provides some of its effects. In the image on the left, which I added simply because it's, well, a beautiful image, the orange areas are the PF4 tag. Anyway, there's a lot more to this study, like the fact that Clotho benefits old and young mice and the effect of PF4 has on cognitive ability. But let's discuss how we can apply this information because I know that's what many want. So that's a fair ask. Well, look, we haven't gotten to the point where we're injecting people with Clotho, but I would not be surprised if that's coming. That said, that doesn't mean there isn't something else that you could do to improve Clotho levels. In fact, exercise increases Clotho levels, and I won't bog you down with some of the details on this specific analysis, although there are some minor errors in it. The results are likely still sound. Namely, exercise raises blood Clotho levels. We see that here. 
If the black diamond there moves to the right, it indicates exercise increases clotho levels. And I know this number known as uh, hedges G might not mean anything to you, but it signifies the effect is pretty big too. Let's get into the uh, type of exercise too. Before we do that, if you're a physionic insider, I'll be covering how to identify the clotho gene to identify if you have the protective mutation or not. In addition, I'll be covering uh, some more details on increasing clotho through exercise, like is there an upper threshold? Is it raised more in some people than others? If you're interested in that, uh, plus the podcast, premium videos, summaries, research reviews, and more, be sure to join. The link is in the description. I would love to have you aboard the Physionic Insider train. Okay, now, what type of exercise? Well, that same analysis broke studies up by the type of exercise, from endurance, long distance uh, exercise, to uh, resistance training. Overall, resistance training had the more robust evidence pointing towards a clotho raising role. However, endurance exercise also raised clotho levels. Either way, the current evidence points in favor of resistance training as being superior, but a direct comparison between the two is necessary to be sure. Now, better educated and well equipped, you now have a better understanding of how clotho protects your brain and a natural way to enhance it, at least until science delivers us some alternatives. We can never sleep on exercise. Thanks for sticking it out with me and check out this next video for more on brain health.